adjustability on the rails there, where you can either move it closer or farther away by about an inch either way usually. Pretty much more. And if it forced you to go up more, then you would be as far Yeah, yeah. More upright, like if the bars are also closer to you as well, you yeah, have a little bit more of a natural angle in your hand. So sometimes it's you know a matter of changing these components like the stem or the handlebar to get one that's that's higher up. You could replace the handlebar? Yeah. Get something that's more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they make adjustable ones as well that can kind of uh, you know tailor the fit to you, make it make it feel the most comfortable. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, it would be really uh, something to look into. is to keep your bike clean and um, if you can keep it inside that's ideal if if you're going to leave it outside just kind of make sure it's going to be covered up so that a lot of moisture is not going to get to it and um, you know the biggest uh, thing that can you know hurt your bike and damage it is rustic corrosion and um, uh, like damage to the surfaces from being exposed to the weather. So a clean bike, uh, you know, with all the the components well lubricated is gonna last a long time. The thing you wanna do like pretty much every time before you ride, make sure you have proper pressure in your tires, make sure they're inflated to the maximum uh, recommendation usually. That's always gonna be on the side of your tire. Right here it's in the small print. Uh, these tires go to a maximum of 65 pounds and uh, sometimes it'll be like in, a, in the patch of the tire like where it's got a, a colored lettering but it's always going to be like printed on um, in small letters and they should be like fairly easy to read on a new tire on an old tire they can wear off and kind of fall off and you won't be able to see them anymore. Would you use like the little tire gauge you use for a car? Yeah, absolutely. I have one that's this one is like bicycle specific. It's got two ends for the two different valves, but um, same idea. And I, any automotive pressure gauge will work. And uh, just want to make sure that it's fully inflated. This one's up to 60. Uh, if you're um, at home uh, and you have like a little hand pump, like a little uh, telescoping one, you're probably not going to be able to fill your tires up. As, as much as you need to to be able to ride. So uh, if you can get it to a gas station to use a compressor, that's really good. Although you have to be careful not to overinflate with uh, one of those. And, I made that like, mistake no once. on the gas station ones, right? So yeah. you can blow your tire up pretty easily. Uh, the, the best thing to have at home is a, a floor pump, which uh, is going to, you know, pretty much do every bicycle tire and you know, there's two different valve types. There's like a, a skinny smaller threaded valve called a Presta valve and then these regular ones like a car tire are called a Schrader valve and those are usually the easiest ones to use. Uh, Presta valve sometimes needs an adapter if you're going to use like a compressor or something like that but most bike pumps work with every every kind of bike valve. So, Floor pump really easy to use, and this one's got a gauge right on it, which is fantastic. But, uh, generally, a hand pump is just kind of for emergency repairs, and you're not going to be able to fully inflate your tire. With so, uh, a monthly basis is make sure that your chain is clean and lubricated properly. So, if you have a, a really dirty, dirty chain. Sometimes all you really need to do is wipe it down with a rag. Uh, if your bike is, you know, on the ground, you can flip it up upside down, and uh, that'll be able to let you work on it a little bit better. Um, but just kind of clean all the, the grits and stuff off it as best as you can. There are products that are designed to kind of like degrease the chain and clean it really well. Um, so if you're using your bike. Uh, for commuting and like bad weather and stuff like that, that would be something to, to look into. Any kind of dirt and debris on your chain is going to shorten the life of your
your other drive chain components. This one looks like it's been repaired at one point. This is, it's like got a, a, this is a brand new chain. It's got a different so link there though? That, that is a, a master link, a connecting link. Um, so, and you use those when you disconnect the chain to put it back together. That way it's not gonna, like if you use one of the pins in the chain to reconnect it, and it's not in all the way, it can cause your chain to snap and break. And, or get stuck. Or yeah, I have or it can get my jammed. chain got stuck, yeah. bam, that's also, you know, it's a, kind of more related to having the gear set up as well, but, but that can certainly happen if you have a bent chain to de derail and get stuck. So the most uh, effective way to loop the chain is just to put the loop on like the link rollers, just the top. The rag just wipe off the excess loop so it's not going to collect dirt and dust and, and that sort of thing. How often do you do that? Um, definitely once a week. More if you're riding like in the rain or you know when it's muddy or something like that. If um, if you get caught in the rain and your bike gets really wet, don't loop your chain right away. Let it sit overnight or something like that for all the water to kind of drain out of it, so you're not trapping moisture in the chain that can cause it to rust from the inside out. So um, call it like a drop test. Pick your bike up, you know, drop it down, and check for anything that's rattling or really loose. You want to make sure that your wheels are tight. You yeah, like if your uh, if your quick release isn't fastened, yeah. I do the drop test to yeah. uh, see if I, my Absolutely. wheel is on. Yeah, your wheel shouldn't shouldn't move from side to side at all. So if you have a quick release wheel, check to make sure that they're tight. And these have uh, an open and closed position on them. One thing that's that's really common. Uh, that I see that's actually really dangerous is people just tightening them by ratcheting them up until they're, they're <laughs> and tight and don't not clamp actually them. closing them. Yeah, you need to yeah. move that clamp. Exactly. So, you want to set it up so that the clutch starts to... So that it starts to get tight like halfway when it's engaged. And then when you close it all the way, it should be Difficult. tight enough to kind of leave like a little imprint in your hand. Like they should be quite snug. You don't want to, you know, do them up so tight that you have to hammer them on or something like that. Then you won't be able to remove them. Your fender only rubs at certain points when the tire is coming around. Is that a sign that your tire is bulging or? Could be, or your, your wheels can be bent like horizontally and laterally as well. So that might be that like, you have a, a dent in your wheel or something that's causing it to move up, uh, but most commonly it's the tire itself. I mean, the, they're made in a mold, so they're not perfectly round on their own. And then also, uh, if you have like a damage to your tire, like a cut or something like that, it can cause it to bulge out. It can rub on your fender for sure you know, if you don't have very much clearance. Handlebars to your fork legs, that bearing shouldn't have any movement in it either. And what you can do to check it is uh, pull the front brake and rock your bike back and forth. The left one's the front brake? Uh, <laughs> typically. Yeah. In, in, in Europe, it's backwards. I mean, we're backwards so oh, really? to the rest of the world. But uh, yeah, in Canada, the left one's the front brake. Um, I didn't realize that yeah, it made well, a like difference. Yeah, a motorcycle, your front brake is on the right because you have the clutch on the left. So. North America is pretty much the only country that has it this way. Hmm. Yeah. What is so China does it the other way or? Uh, typically, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay, so yeah, the steering bearings, and they also shouldn't be so tight that your your wheel doesn't freely turn as well. So, uh, same thing with the pedals and crank. Check them for for movement side to side. Usually the pedal will have a little bit of, of movement in the bearings, and that's okay. If it's severe, if it's like really loose, yeah, or if they <laughs> click or, or creak or make sounds like that, you might want to get them replaced. So is the, the creaking's usually from the pedal then? Ninety percent of the time it is, and the rest of the time it can be from the the bottom bracket bearing set, the actual uh, bearings that are located in the frame. And what you want to do to check those is grab both of the, the crank arms and move them from side to side. And you should feel like equal movement on both sides. 
or a, um, if you have like a, a click or a creak sound, sometimes you want to put more pressure down on it, like you, you put your, all your body weight into it or use your foot, and if you hear the bearings kind of creak or crack, that could be a, an indication that that bearing is, is either worn out or it's loose in the frame. So, and pedal the bike forward. And uh, I guess it would be turning it like to the left. And then to tighten it, you spin it backwards. Same thing for the left hand side because it's a reverse thread. Pedaling it forward will loosen it off. And then if you're changing them, just apply some grease to the threads. You want to tighten them down pretty securely, like I need to be. They need to be on there quite tight so that the, not, the threads can be loose and they can knock as well, like if they're not secured down.